Today I'm talking to Liz and she uh, is an RV blogger in the US and I have so many questions for her. <laughs> First off, um, Liz, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name is Liz Wilcox. Um, I run a website in the United States called The Virtual Campground where I share resources and stories to keep full-time RVers like myself and Karen happy and humored on the road. So you see a lot of um, like humor stories, uh, trends in the RV space, and storytelling on my website. What made you decide to get the RV in the first place? Um, well, that's a pretty funny story. So like I said, I'm married and I have a three-year-old daughter now. And when she was born, my husband was deployed to Afghanistan. And so I lived in a really small space at in my in-laws house mm. and um, when we were getting ready to buy a house as my husband was coming home the deal on the house fell through and he had always joked about um, where we were moving in the south of the United States he says oh everyone in the south lives in a caravan here and um, so I said yeah sure um, I've lived in this small space forever and I hate cleaning and I just like hanging out with my daughter so let's do it. And so um, I rented an RV for an overnight stay and I said, wow, this is um, a lot cooler than I thought it was. And eight days later, after staying in the hotel, we found an RV on the side of the road and we bought it the next day. Well, I guess with my idea, I, had, I had never even stayed in a UK caravan before. I was like, right, I'm doing it. So, <laughs> so probably a safer idea to rent it for a night at least. <laughs> And how did you find the first couple of months living in the RV? Was it a steep learning curve or? Oh yes, oh my gosh, it was such a disaster. <laughs> you know, of course you get in it and I mean, I see your little curtains and pillows in the background, you know, you wanna give it a personal touch. <laughs> yeah. I'm not very, you know, I'm not like Susie Homemaker or anything, <laughs> but I just really wanted to pull up the carpet. So we pulled up the carpet and we found water damage. Oh uh, no. It ended up being 10 months of oh. renovation. <laughs> oh no, that's not what you want at the start. You know, of course we couldn't give up after then, yeah. you know, after that. So now we road. <laughs> now we said, oh, well, let's just get this baby moving. <laughs> um, we've been on the road about nine and a half months. And I will tell you guys the end of that story. The good news is the day we finished renovating it, the day we finished like the very last piece of flooring, yep. we sold it. <laughs> what? And now we have a better art. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we were. I did not know but, that. <laughs> yeah, we sold it. We said, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We don't, it was too big to hit the road with. We knew we wanted to travel. Yeah. And it was just, you know, one of those giant, you know, everything in a America is so much bigger and we said we don't need all the space and so we sold it for motor home so now we have an RV you know with a driver's seat and all that. Americans love fifth wheels they're almost everyone has one they're the most uh, popular technique. Well it makes my home seem very modest. <laughs> so it's tiny. Yeah right. There's like a seating area, a fitted bed, tiny tiny kitchen, combination toilet shower and that's about it. <laughs> So in America, we call that a wet bath. Do you guys use that word? Wet bath? No, I've I've heard of, I know what that means when you say wet bath, but we don't, we call it a combination toilet shower. Now that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I guess we don't like here in America to hear toilet and shower in the same sentence. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good point. <laughs> We're too sensitive, I guess. Oh, it's a, it's a wet bath, darling. It's a wet bath. <laughs> And then what would you call my caravan um, in America? A trailer. A trailer. a trailer. Right. So for me, a trailer is something that you dump wood in and you just cart down the road, you know? <laughs> yeah, we call them trailers. What well, we would call yours like a travel trailer. Travel trailer, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I know, um, I like how we don't seem to use RV much and it's quite annoying because when you want to just describe all types of um, mobile homes, you end up having to have quite a mo mouthful describing them all. And yeah. then 
I would call yours, I guess, a motorhome, but do you have a, a, a different name for it as well? A class? Yeah. So in America, you guys don't have classes? No, not at all. <laughs> we have different classes of motorhomes because we have the class C, which is mine. If I move my camera, you can see there's a cab. Oh, yes. And below is um, the drivers. So that's called the class C. Yeah. And that's the... I mean, in America, that's what most people think of a motorhome is ours. Um, actually, the Class A is more popular, which is just, it looks like a big bus, I guess. Okay. You know, it doesn't have the cab. This yep. would just be all um, And those, yeah. those are really popular. Um, but for us, you know, I said I have a daughter. Yeah. So the, this type of motorhome, the C, is much nicer because she's got all this room this is where she sleeps nice. um so yeah. kind of like a separate bedroom without having to get something like yours a little bigger with a travel trailer you know they're in america they have like bedrooms and stuff i know internet, yeah. you complain about your internet a lot um <sighs> yeah how do you how do you get the internet in america <laughs> okay so um what i do is i have a hot spot um it's right here and it's connected to a phone SIM card? Um, it's Yeah, it's connected to, I have Verizon Wireless. It's a phone company. I don't know if you guys have that in New Zealand, but no. it's a phone company. It's the most popular. It's the best one in America. So I have Verizon. I have a hotspot here, which this is basically, you know, like a phone with no screen. It's just for internet. Yep. And I can connect that to my laptop. And then on my actual phone, I have another hotspot. Yeah. Just like in my phone so that gives me more data i also have just the regular data that my phone plan gives me so basically when i'm doing social media you know just playing around on my phone i can use the phone internet and to work i connect this to my laptop and when this when i when i use it all up then i turn on like the version of this in my phone and can, I can connect that to my laptop. But um, sometimes that doesn't work. Um, you know, I can be, right now I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. And so this wasn't working very well. Okay. Tonight, to be able to do this recording, I actually purchased internet from the campground. I spend a lot of time in libraries or, you know, like at a restaurant that has Wi-Fi, you know, like a fast food chain or something that has internet, you know, go in, buy a soda, buy a burger, whatever, mm. and two hours. And I find that to be a lot more, like, it's a lot less frustrating because, you know, when I have to work, I have to work, right? I want right. it to work. Yeah. Well, I suppose with me, when I first started this lifestyle, I was hotspotting my phone. Um, and yeah. I, I bought the biggest mobile pack, but I think it only gave me 15 gigs to use in a month. And I think I used that within a week. <laughs> so, I, so I was kind of thinking this, how, how could you make it actually work? That wasn't working for me because our campgrounds, if you use their Wi-Fi, it's terrible. It's just, it's so yeah. slow. It's like back 10 years ago, like dial up internet speed. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up finding we've got a company that has a an actual modem and I can plug that into the power and and it's yeah. about a hundred hundred New Zealand dollars a month. But we also do have boosters here, not as good as yours, but like some my friend actually runs an R V um like internet company he just started. Oh, yeah. Because the internet is so bad in America. And so I actually just saw him and I met him. He's one of my readers and yeah. he he gave me one of his new boosters. So I guess America's just so big <laughs> compared to New Zealand. Well, to give you an idea of how small New Zealand is, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd only take about 20 hours to drive from the very, very top to the very, very bottom. And it's a very narrow yeah. country as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think, um, so I used to live in Florida in the United States and I live, it's like, um, it kind of looks like this, like, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, true. yeah, yeah. Right? And yeah. so they have, it, they call it a panhandle, you know, the part that, you know, like you're yeah. holding the pan and then the pans. Oh, cool. Nice. So I used to live on the very edge, um, near the next 
state. And I drove all the way to the bottom where the, there's a set of islands, you know, the keys are there. Yeah. And I drove literally basically from one end to the next, like the longest. And it took us almost 14 hours and we were in one state. I mean, I know people that have been traveling for 10 years and still yeah. haven't gone to all 50 states. Oh, that's insane. That's so crazy to think exactly. about. <laughs> yeah. I feel like while. all of New Zealand, I'm just doing another loop. <laughs> so, you have a book uh, about hilarious tales about um, RV toilets. <laughs> and they just sound different to the ones I'm used to in New Zealand. We've got tiny little cassette toilets that you have to generally, generally, and then you have to take them out and separately empty them. And because they're quite small, you have to do it. For me, it's about once a week. I don't know if you have more people, <laughs> like how often you'd have to empty it. But right. do you have a holding tank underneath? Is that how it works? Yes. So most RVs, um, especially the ones built in the last 10 or 20 years, have holding tanks. Um, the tank that holds your like dirty dish water, your shower water, is called the gray tank. Yep. And the um, the toilet water is called the black tank. <laughs> nice. So yeah, so my book is called Tales from the Black Tank and it's all just crappy RV <laughs> stories. Um, not all of them, you know, are literally about the black tank, but you know, it's in America, at least when you say black tank, RVers know like, oh my gosh, that everyone kind of says like, yes, I have that story of, you know, when it went crazy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have this cute little, oh, it's my cassette, it's my cassette, I'll just pull it out and carry it over to the dump, <laughs> you know. We have huge holding tanks, like, um, I just asked my husband this question this morning, how big ours was. Yeah. And I said combined both tanks with something like 40 gallons, um, we could hold. How often do you find you have to empty it? Uh, we do once a week. There's two of us here and our daughter. Yeah. But we do not shower in our RV. We use that as a closet. Um, my husband is six foot five, so he's just too big anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't do, you know, we don't camp out in a lot of like really isolated areas. We really like campgrounds. Um, so we always have a shower. And, um, you know, if we're in this really awesome place where we're not inside very often, then we can go about um, two weeks if we really needed to. Oh, yeah. Always limited storage in an RV. Like, I'm just one person in this area and I've filled it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> how, do you st how do you find your storage situation? In this motorhome, the Class C, like I was telling you, yeah. um, we have an older model, about 10 or 11 years old, and... Um, when they made them, they didn't make any outside storage. So this we built. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is box. So my husband, um, my husband is an RV tech. So he works on RVs as we travel. Look out! It had like two seats here, and we just took that out, and he built a box. And so the toddler out, yeah. and it just up. <laughs> And yeah. that's where you get tools and everything. So that's kind of the work storage. Right. And so my husband, you know, it took us 10 months to renovate that first RV, right? So I said, yeah. oh, we'll buy some nice wood and we'll stain it. It'll look <laughs> really pretty. And we'll, you know, I was like, look, look, I even spent, you know, I was like, oh, I'll buy beautiful pillows. Nice. And, you know, as you can see, it's still just a box. We never stained it. Especially people that don't RV, like our family, they're like, is that your couch? Where's the cushion? <laughs> I'm currently staying at, a, it's called an NZMCA park. Um, so if you're mm -hmm. a member of a group and you pay a set yearly fee, you can stay at these uh, campgrounds. And they're basically, this is just basically a gravel road, a gravel area with some hoses for some fresh water and that's it that's all there is so i'm really yeah. starting to test my shower the last few days i even washed my hair this morning <laughs> do that's you funny. have uh, groups or organizations something similar to that or yeah yeah we're actually staying at one um it's 
here we call um there's i mean there's a few but the most popular is called thousand trails okay and, um it's cross country most of the campgrounds are usually kind of on the coast you know yeah. like all east coast all on the west there's not a ton in the middle um but we love it it's very cheap it's 500 dollars a year and they break the country into four zones mm -hmm. and so it's hundred dollars for one zone and then you can continue adding zones for only fifty dollars oh okay so and there's other lifetime memberships but what you know basically it's very cheap and um but the campgrounds are very old most people yeah. again a lot of people say oh liz i don't know how you have used thousand trails uh those campgrounds are really ghetto or whatever <laughs> really? ghetto. people say ghetto though <laughs> um, but I love them. Um, I like them because a lot of other um, families that do this kind of lifestyle use them because nice. it does get very affordable. Yeah. Like right now we're staying at one and the sites are very close together. You know, it's like kind of cramped in. Like I'm looking over here and I see like three RVs. I look over here, I'm seeing like a hundred, right? Oh, so we're wow. very close. But yeah. I like because there's other, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. lot. Well, it's our time here so everyone is camping so i'm finding i've been living this lifestyle for nearly two years now and i found it seems to be mainly either retirees or backpackers there's not a whole lot of people my age doing it um you just mentioned that there are a lot of families staying at these campgrounds do you find um there are a lot of uh people your age doing it when i stay at places like this like the thousand trails yes we find at least one other family um, that is full-time doing it it nice. really is this very or I mean I guess because I'm in it it seems like it's a really big mo movement but it seems like um, we always meet at least one other family wherever we go that is doing it nice. or or really wants to know how we did it you know, a lot of, we call them full-time families, um, you know, families that travel around or people younger than me, um, you know, couples, like, um, you know, just mid twenties, you know, they don't have kids or they don't have kids yet and they're traveling around. And that seems like a really popular demographic right now. You know, at least um, once a week, I would say we meet another family like us um, in 2008. So I guess about 10 years ago, um, the housing market really crashed. A lot of people lost their jobs. And yeah. I think people my age, between that 25 and 35 um, range, mm -hmm. realized that, um, you know, the dollar is not permanent and um, neither is your job. So you should do what you want to do. You have a few things going on at the moment. I, I know you're a, is it a VA for someone else? And you're setting up your own business as well? Okay, yeah. So I work for... I'm not a VA, but I work for a best-selling author and blogger. His name is Jeff Goins. Um, he wrote a book called Real Artists Don't Starve. So he teaches writers how to make money online and how to, you know, write bestsellers and um, start to build audiences, things like that. So I, so basically, I just uh, answer his emails and run his Facebook groups with another lady. Um, she's my superior, and he's just like kind of this big boss guy. Then I run my website, The Virtual Campground, which I explained at the beginning. You know, I share resources um, for full-time RVers. And then I just started this new venture with a mastermind group that I've been in for over a year. And we're starting something new. It's called Blogging Camp, like pun intended. And it just helps other RV bloggers and travel bloggers um, get their blog actually making money. Because we've all had our websites for less than two years, but we all were able to monetize and create our own products and yeah. make a living um, doing this within the first like year, year and a half. One of the main um, issues that stop people doing this lifestyle is how can they make money on the road? So that's fantastic to hear. Thank you Liz so much for joining me today. It's been really interesting talking to you and can't wait to see what brings happens in the future. What adventure you go on? Awesome. Thanks for having me, Karen. Hopefully, Bye. I'll visit New Zealand soon. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs>